Hi, this is Dave Black, the Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. We are live on Kelly's Island, Ohio, in the middle of Lake Erie, just a few miles from the Canadian border. Uh, this is our second island that we've been on in Lake Erie in the last few days. This is our annual trip, 2018, and we are here at the Kelly's Island History Museum with the historian of Kelly's Island, uh, Leslie Karenko. Say hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> and Ohio. also, uh, we have with us the, uh, what, what is your position at the Chamber of Commerce? Well, I guess I'm a manager of sorts. So okay. really, we're here just to, to show that there are many different types of tourism opportunities on Kelly's Island, including yes. uh, supernatural. Including paranormal <laughs> tourism. <laughs> exactly. Jordan yes. uh, Killam, uh, she's, uh, she's the one from the, I called the Chamber of Commerce uh, a couple weeks ago to kind of touch base about all of this, and, and Jordan was kind enough to like jump right in and help us out introduce us to you and uh this is going to be really fun uh so of course we're here with lexi raven uh oscar specter joe erie and and uh jason knight uh listeners so uh jay take it away (laughs) oscar yeah you're you're the one that wants to you're you're the one that likes to lead things oh now you're making me sound like i have a power trip no um so when Dave said that we had uh, an interview set up with Kelly Island's official historian, uh, we were I was really excited. Um, it lends an air of authenticity to the podcast. It's not just us out there uh, wandering around, kind of trying to figure things out our own. And just reading uh, off of signs that we see right, like we so usually do. Thank you for this opportunity, first of all, to sit down with you. Um, we're really excited. And... I think Jordan mentioned it best. There's many different types of tourism. Um, one of them, which is very popular today, is paranormal tourism. So we would we would really be interested in the history of Kelly's Island. Uh, what keeps people coming back here and interested in this lovely place? Well, not surprising. Kelly's Island has a really rich history that goes back quite a ways. Um, I love that you gave me credit for being the historian. I did write six books about the island, but I follow in the footsteps of Dr. Boker and Betty Pape and a whole bunch of other people that spent years collecting family histories and researching. Um, I was able to give the islanders their voice in the books, which gave us all these wonderful little small stories. Nice. The history goes back to around the 1830s, when Datus and Irad Kelly started purchasing the island. They were from Cleveland, a very prominent family in Cleveland, and were looking for an investment opportunity. It took them almost a year to buy all the parcels on the island. Hey there, Dave Black here. I'm with Joe Erie. Hello. And we are right outside the Kelly's mansion. Uh, this is, I believe, the mansion that the Kelly's brothers that originally owned the island built and lived in, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's right on the edge of town or edge of the downtown area. And we're standing out on the front lawn right now, and it is creepy. Yeah. We uh, have like a turret tower on top uh, that's got a light in it right now. They're doing renovations on it. And walking up to the building right now is like Electric Avenue. Yep. (laughs) I was going to say, don't you feel like like people are watching you right now? Oh, man, it's so strong. It's in my back. Oh, walking up the front steps right now, and it's like, it's like all pistons firing like 100% like on. I'm kind of walking around the whole property right now, just shining a light on it and taking a look at it. Um fenced off in the back here so I can't get around the side of it but it is strongly hotly on fire with energy this place is awesome when we were talking to the historian earlier she was telling us uh, she was telling us that the um, that only the very rich people were able to afford the masons to come in and build uh, these stone houses. And this Kelly's Mansion is indeed a, uh, a stone house. And uh, it is made of what looks like the quarried limestone right from here on the island. 
and uh, it's it's got it, you know it looks like your standard kind of uh, cinder block and brick walls, but instead of cinder blocks and bricks, it's actually chunks of uh, actual limestone cut into kind of all sorts of shapes. Um, there's like skinny narrow pieces there's big chunky pieces that look about the thickness of uh, uh, cinder blocks and then there's all these like little flagstone pieces in between it almost looks like somebody just stacked up a whole bunch of rocks like with mortar and then just kind of like shaved them all down to make them flat but I'm right at the corner of the porch now and this thing is coming out at me like full steam ahead like hey there how you doing Whoa, it's like in my face, it's in my brain. Uh, it's like really strong right here on the porch right now. They could have, the Kelly family could have managed the island with a very firm hand, but they didn't. They encouraged education, free speech, entertainment. They actually built that big stone building downtown, Kelly's Hall. Mm. They built that at their own expense in 1861 and donated it to the community. Wow. That's where we get a lot of our history because for 17 years they had a handwritten newspaper on the island ranging from 45 to 180 pages. They published it every week during the winter time. And the editors changed every week. So we got all kind of views. They covered current events, local activities. Um, if an editor got bored, he toured the island and described what he saw. So buildings going up, people coming and going. Um, it, it's just extraordinary. And then they filled the pages with what I call small stories, little bits and pieces of everyday life, a little girl trying to bake a cake, um, children chasing chickens around the yard, mm -hmm. uh, the catastrophe of trying to tighten the ropes on a bed, remember, sleep tight, mm -hmm. and, and so we have all these wonderful little stories, and most of them had been forgotten, and in fact, most of the stories that you hear have been reduced to just one or two sentences. I have to say, the background information is always way more interesting mm -hmm. than what it's filtered down to. Such as, could you give us an example? <laughs> oh, oh, wow, there would be like way too many. Um, there was a mysterious disappearance, oh, uh, right. at which it was up on Long Point. It was Elizabeth's self. They came to the island, she and her husband. Her husband passed away within a year of arriving. And um, one night, she said she saw a man's head a face in the window, and and the ch the children were really interviewed. I was really surprised because they did things a lot different back then. Yeah. And they explained that her mother started screaming, threw herself on the floor, started pulling her hair out, and sometime during the night she left. Mm. Well, they found her clothes near the water, and her body washed ashore days later. Um, everyone was convinced that it was basically a suicide that she had, you know, had an, an issue, and the islanders were convinced that it was murder. Wow. And they really tried to get the coroner to investigate it and determine. But the islanders dragged the lake for days before her body finally washed up. What do you think? Do you think it was a murder? Tough call. The family believes that it was definitely murder, but all evidence appears to point to her having an emotional breakdown of some sort. So. And she complained of a pain in her head, so I thought maybe she'd had some kind of aneurysm in the water. It's possible. Yeah. On the other hand, the islanders said that P that uh, that they've observed men following her and being on the property, too. So, oh. uh, you well, know, it really just kind of depends. <laughs> what, what, when was that? When, when did that happen? What was the date? Oh, sure. Make me pull a date out. It was like 1860s? Uh, uh -huh. No, it was... Um, I want to say like 1870s, okay. maybe okay. early 1880s. I, I'd like to ask a question. Now, you said that the Kellys brothers were purchasing parcels of land on the island. Who were they purchasing it from? Uh, Who owned the island? Good question. Mm -hmm. Kelly's Island was mm -hmm. one of the islands that were kind of part of the Firelands. During the Revolutionary War, the people of Connecticut got burned out by the, by the British. As compensation, they were awarded land, which they called the Firelands. 
this was island number six of uh, seven or eight or possibly nine islands. Again, going back a ways. And if you were awarded, say, what's now a township that wasn't quite as valuable as another township, you might have gotten a chunk of one of all these islands. Putin Bay was one, North South, uh, North South Bass Island, Middle Island, uh, Middle Bass Island, our island, what a bunch of others. And over the years, there were probably about a dozen people who owned parts of Kelly's Island. They all lived in Connecticut except for one man, Simon Parkins. He lived southwest of Cleveland, and they used him as a broker to purchase all the properties. Oh. You know, I believe uh, one of the islands was used as a Civil War prison camp. Good question um. again. Not our island. Um, that would be Johnson's Island. That's on the other side of the Marblehead Peninsula in Sandusky Bay. Okay, was there any uh, history here with the Civil War? I, I didn't know if uh, I know like if they used one and possibly a couple others, but okay. Well, when they were doing when they were scouting out locations for a new Confederate prison up in this area, they went over to South Bass Island, and no one there wanted to sell land. They came over here to Kelly's Island because an island would have been a perfect choice, real easy to manage. I mean, you know, let's face it, the prisoners, if they escaped, weren't going to get very far. Yeah. And um, they, <laughs> right, yeah. there you go. And uh, they did investigate a few parcels that were um, being considered, and the islanders who owned them were considering selling. One was on the north side, one was on the southwest side. But they determined that the how did they phrase it? The proximity to the wineries and the brandy establishment <laughs> distillery mm. uh, might prove to be a detriment not only to the prisoners but also to the guards. Uh -huh. So they ended up, someone suggested Bull's Island, which later became known as Johnson's Island, and that was the site of the Confederate prison. What is the, what's the actual square mileage of this island? Uh, the island is approximately two and a half by four miles. Okay. About t almost 2,900 um, uh, acres. Sorry. <laughs> gotcha. So from tip to tip, like what's the furthest length you can go on this island? Well, you'd have to go probably diagonal, which would be from Carpenter's Point all the way up to the tip along point. And that's four it's miles? Probably about five miles total. Oh, okay. yeah. Cool. Now, with the early Kelly hmm. Islanders, what was their religious makeup? Were they Just about everything you can imagine. So it was a mix. At one time, we had five churches on the island. Um, the St. Michael's Catholic Church was the first one. The second one was the church next door to us, which is the German Reformed Church. Mm -hmm. um, then we had a um, uh, the Zion Methodist Church on the corner. And celebrating its 125th anniversary yeah. tomorrow. Yes, it oh, is. Nice. I'm so excited about that. Yeah. Um, and then there were two other churches. There was a congregational church across from the Zion Church. And uh, down the street a little bit, there was a Greek Orthodox church. Oh. The last two churches no longer exist. So you're not kidding. Uh, there was a electric mix. A little bit of everything. I don't know about you guys when she told that story about the woman who wound up in the water when she threw herself down, yeah. started pulling at her hair. I took the paranormal angle on that one, so I was yeah. wondering what the religious the, the Zion, undertones were here back then. Uh, the Zion Church that's having its 125th anniversary, is that the original church building that we just passed? It's a yes and no. The original congregation started meeting in the little white house next door, Okay, and then they built that house in, I forgot the date, oh, uh -huh. there's a nice little cornerstone a little cornerstone in there, and, and was it was it in the 18th century or the oh, yeah. 19th century yeah, it was or 18, 1800s? Well, 125 years from today. Okay, because <laughs> I, when I when I saw the church, it certainly didn't look that. I mean, it didn't look like an old building. It looked like a fairly modern building. I don't know if it's just because it's got modern siding on it or whatever, but it certainly didn't strike me as a building that would have been that old. Judging from the old pictures, it really has not changed much. Wow. Okay. What's uh, the history with Native Americans on the island? Eh? I was going to ask what was here before. Yeah. before the, war. Well, <laughs> and the, the, the reason is, uh, so last night we did a quick uh, drive through the island, and we went to the glaciers, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the grooves, the, yeah, the, uh, the glacier grooves, and uh, I just got a feeling of Native Americans, but I even got um, a feeling that just looked real prehistoric over there. And, and so not only about Native Americans, but I wondered if they found any other DNA or any bones around the island.
Okay, we are now here at the Glacial Grooves again, uh, where we started off our adventure last night. We came here first, and we actually came here during the day to get some photographs and stuff. Okay, so right now, just walking up, I'm already feeling it. Um, I, we don't have any stories from the Glacial Grooves. We don't know why the Glacial Grooves have an energy to them, but we are definitely feeling it. Um, Maybe it's just like a giant stone with energy, I don't know. But now walking up around the uh, curve where we were last night, I'm already, wow, it's super strong here. And I mean, I just, I feel, okay. I feel like Native American or prehistoric. But what I'm feeling right now is like, it's like full on in my head, 100% going strong. Like this is like your standard issue like real deal mortis cemetery energy that i'm feeling I, I, right I now i feel it in my stomach right now it's it's like on top of me right now it's in my head it's in my spine it's in my body like i'm feeling all the bells and whistles right now I'm get, um, i am getting it in my back okay now it's subsiding a little bit up here? Oh, it's the staircase. but i recall when we came up on the staircase last night we felt you started feeling it up here. I kind of like I almost feel right now. Okay, I'm not even at the stairs yet, and I'm already feeling it. Joe, do you have the camera? Take a picture of me because it's really strong right now, and I'm seeing things above me. I don't know what I just saw, but there's something in the trees. I saw something in the trees. Just keep taking pictures this way, because my eyes are watering and. I don't know what's happening right now, but I, I swear I saw something in the trees above me, and I don't know what it was, but I, I just saw it for a second. It was like a dark, kind of rippling shadow. Okay, I shadows too? I saw a shadow in the trees behind us. My, my eyes are watering, and I'm like, I'm really, I'm kind of scared right yeah, now. Yeah, it's a, it's a scary feel. But it's... it's I mean, it's look, on look, it's look, on look, me look right mine. now. I, I am. I it's am on me right up. now. It's like really like oh, this what, is the strongest I felt. The shadows. I don't know, but Joe, it's like oh, my man. eyes are watering. I can't. Dude. Okay. Uh, what the hell was that? I I just saw a bar of a bar of darkness right here in front of me. Move to the right. Oh man. Something to do with. It, 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 this is definitely, definitely this was like a old, this this old, had to be like a energy. this had to be like a sacred place yes way way before way before maybe even indians i feel i keep feeling like there's somebody here with us like yeah. there's somebody up like not and not in like a haunted way but like in a there's somebody oh, like hanging like, out up here right now and they're watching, watching us watching over us it's almost like ready to attack or something right it just feels like i'm going to shine look my light my at look at my arms, so yeah you know i know i know i feel like i'm going to shine my light at fucking human eyes looking back at me any second now so a shadow right behind you okay i don't i don't like this uh These are dark shadows okay Dude, Jay, there's fucking huge black shadows dark shadows black shadows in the fucking trees Okay, there was an Indian presence on the island. There is nothing to indicate that it was a year-round residency. You have to remember the, uh, the Indians were migratory. They went where the food was, where the climate suited them best. Much like the birds migrating, they would come across, say, Sandusky Bay, um, hitting Johnson's Island, Marblehead Peninsula, Kelly's Island, Middle Island, and then uh, uh, Pili, Point Pili up in Canada. That's the way the birds go. It gives them a resting place. It's not all one shot. You have to take into account that south and west of here was the Great Black Swamp. So that was a shortcut to everywhere. It appears that the Indians probably came through Kelly's in spring and fall, probably for the fishing. They did find some burials um, scattered um, one or two skeletons uh, here, uh, a family there. Um, again, no particular burial mounds. There were several what they called forts on the island, which of course have been all plowed under by now. Um, they did find where um, there were some indents in the rocks along the shore where they believe they ground 
uh, probably corn and other grains. Some of those were chipped out and sent over to the Western Reserve Historical Society. So yes, there is evidence, and yes, for a while. In fact, the kids used to laugh, the old timers, they would go out into a field, pick up arrowheads and Toss them at each other. Yeah, well, <laughs> Those are mostly gone now. No, I, I they, know when we came in uh, off the air, I heard you guys mentioning that there were geoglyphs on Kelly's Island. There is yeah. a so petroglyphs. This, petroglyphs. 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 Okay, got it. Carvings. Um, would these be the same people responsible for those petroglyphs? Possibly. I, you know, I, I wish there was more. Mm-hmm. It, what? When the Kellys first discovered the rock, it was almost entirely embedded in the bank. So it was almost entirely covered. They saw a couple of the petroglyphs sticking out. They uncovered some more of it. A man named Schoolcraft was doing um, an extensive study on Indians across the United States. He had come here. He was the one that did the original drawings of the petroglyphs. And um, he said they were the best example that he had seen. Of course, there's been a lot of discussion on what they mean. It appears it's broken into sections because the drawings are different in some areas. Um, the Kellys firmly believe that it was not ceremonial or anything. It was just someone marking down, say, something that happened to the community. And they gave an, an exa- as an example one petroglyph down in the corner um, that shows what appears to be a man walking and smoking a pipe. Just down to the right is a woman, it appears to be a woman with her hands on her hips, and it looks like there are words maybe coming out of her mouth. There's that's lines. definitely that guy's wife. She's well, not to smoke. And, and that's, uh-huh. that's exactly it. The interpretation they made was a woman yelling at her husband for smoking in the house. Because even back then, they recognized it was not good. Yeah. Um, I know in Canada there's some uh, examples of well, Vikings coming down. And is there anything with Vikings at all near these islands? No. Um, uh, the, the, the islands were formed because of the glaciers retreating. But other than that, in fact, um, Lake Erie was probably the last island to be actually explored because it didn't really take you anywhere. The other islands, you know, yeah. the, the other lakes... Uh, got you to other places, but you could get to where, like, Sandusky and the South, Sh- uh, South Shore is. Yeah, even ancient Not- yeah. people didn't want to go to Cleveland. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh that, <laughs> that was cruel. <laughs> Cleveland listeners, Come on. I'm sorry, Cleveland rocks. <laughs> This episode of the Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. GoDaddy.com is offering our listeners a huge 30% discount on any new GoDaddy service. Go ahead and buy that domain you've always wanted. Build your dream website, sell your product, and communicate with your fans. Anything you need to get your business and ideas online and productive. To take advantage of the 30% discount, you must visit www.trygodaddy.com forward slash SOS dash radio. What are you waiting for? That's trygodaddy.com forward slash SOS dash radio. Start building your online presence today. Because, um, yeah, I guess you can go up uh, and then Lake Michigan to Desplaines River to, yeah, Mississippi. Um, one of the questions I had was, um, so we were talking about, uh, I completely forgot what I was trying to say. Well, but, here, do you want me to, because I have an next one. You, you go ahead. Okay. And then I'll. We were asking about the uh, Native American history. One last night when we went to the glacial, the glacial uh, grooves. grooves. That's what I was going to ask. Joe and Dave did have this kind of overwhelming feeling of Native American. We were looking at at the way that the like, and thinking to ourselves like, there's 
Native Americans had to use this for something. Like it seems like, I, and, and one of the suggestions I made was like, I don't know, grinding grain in there or something. Like it just seems like such a convenient these shoots that they would have done something with them. It's like, almost like ceremonial, like with uh, me too. Like it was like a as a like a prominent place for them. Well, the Indians did not keep really good records that they right, would hand right, down. Yeah. Um, I can tell you that up until the 1970s, the all but like the first hundred feet or so was under about forty feet of debris. From so, the from the quarries? From or... the quarry or natural, it was really kinda of hard to tell, but you can really see it in the pictures. So it's unlikely that they would have been uncovered that early in the game that the Indians would have used it. Gotcha. Uh, Fort wise, Indian occupation wise, it appears there was activity on Long Point and then mostly along the South Shore, which would make sense. A lot of the fishing is off, you know, in the, in the middle channel. And if they were going back and forth to the mainland, they would have gone south. Is there shore. a reason that the glacial grooves end so abruptly? Did they like quarry that out? They were and then, quarried out. Yeah. We used to see articles in the paper all the time about, uh, if you want to see the 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 grooves that were recently uncovered on Kelly's Island get there before Friday, so and and then they would quarry them out. Hmm. In the 1880s, they decided to protect what you see now. It's a triangular piece of land, and the um, Kelly's Island Lime and Transport Company deeded it over to the. Uh, Basically, the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, Western Reserve Historical, it was named a little bit different back then. Got it. And I know, listeners, you can't visualize what we're talking about with the mm-hmm. glacial grooves, but I think Dave Black said it best when we visited last night. It's like uh, a massive hand just came down, spread fingers, and clawed its way through, imagine, sand. Yeah, I, I, the way I figured it is Only like when you're, limestone. On, when you're on the beach and you and just we'll rake your fingers through the sand. we'll try to get some pictures up on the website for that. We'll try yeah. to get some pictures up on the website. Real good explanation. Yeah. I love that we're uh, talking about the Native American aspect here because I, I would, would like to segue into Jordan. Yeah, Jordan. One thing I'm, we've I'm, I'm found on... over the 20 years we've been doing this is that anywhere there's uh, any sort of Native American history, it's also – Highly spiritually charged, There's especially an energy there. Especially Jordan, when I hear you have a connection <laughs> somehow to this island. Dave's going to let me finish at one point. Especially when Sometime. limestone or granite or like some sort That's of hard right. rock is involved, it That's always right. seems like that kind of channels the energy like and an it keeps it there. Yeah. Right. So, what are your thoughts? Well, I think that islands in general are just sort of hotbeds for psychic activity or potential for psychic activity. I'm not sure how much I believe, but I know that I come from sort of a line of very sensitive women. Like my grandmother, for example, she used to do automatic writing at our place on the north side and, uh, you know, contact the spirits and it would make her very, very tired and she just was always a woman with, I think, half a foot in a different world. Wow. She used to sit with me and um, tell me that she could uh, name, I, I should pick a person, visualize that person inside my head, and that she could tell me who it was. And so one time we were out at dinner, and she said to do that. And uh, so after a long silence, she said, um, you don't like her hairstyle very much, but you very much enjoy being in her English class. <laughs> and it was, I was thinking about my eighth grade English teacher. Anyway, so a lot was of was it always people personal to you, or was it like celebrities, or could it be uh, anyone? Well, it could be it could be anyone really. She was well, great at it, but she also just sort of served as a conduit, I guess. For was it like a twenty questions thing where no, she'd ask you questions? No, and she'd just she come just up, she'd, she'd just so. come up with it really. No. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of reports, of course, of sightings and people having strange feelings on this island and probably all the others. Um, it's just, there's a sense of separateness, I think, from the mainland. And if you stay here for a long time, it gets baked in. That's one of the reasons yes, I wanted it does. to. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the reasons I wanted to come to these islands is because. 
Um, you know, we wanted to do, do a trip this year that wasn't like super involved. We la- uh, a couple years ago we went all the way out to Massachusetts. We drove drove out there, um, went to Salem and all that. Um, last year we went we flew out to Nevada. We did Area 51 last year. So this year we wanted to kind of stay closer to home and 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 be a little bit more. Like you're a world away. Yeah. yeah. And the th- the yeah. reason yeah. I wanted to come out here is because um, I I have always been interested in nature and stuff, and I I came out to Kelly's Island about 12 years ago for the first time to see the Kelly's Island salamanders and water snakes that are endemic to these islands that don't exist anywhere else so cool yeah they don't exist anywhere else in the world and um and it's this really cool uh not only geologic kind of marvel but also an evolutionary marvel where you can see things how they evolved on these islands and and that was pretty neat to me um but one of the first things i noticed about being here is it, it it feels like you're in like a, some sleepy little town in Maine with like lighthouses and like a mist hanging over and kind of it, it, it's kind of it feels like uh, it's the you perfect know. setting for a murder mystery. Yeah, it's it's like, indeed. Uh, it's got this very very Stephen King type it of feel. Does. Is there a lighthouse on this island? Yes. It's the oldest. It's actually a functioning lighthouse. It's tiny. It does function on, on Monaghan Road in front of Camp Patmos. Okay. It, it started out as yep. just something that they, they built, and then I understand they got clearance to actually have it on the maps as a lighthouse. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Somebody said it was like the oldest lighthouse of the islands. Oh, that's true. Uh, that's on the uh, Marblehead Peninsula. Again, this one is only maybe oh, yeah. twenty feet tall. I mean, it's just kind of a miniature yeah. one. But the one over in Marblehead is we were really over old. At, <laughs> uh, at Put in Bay, we went to the South Bass Island Lighthouse, and it was really interesting. It was like a lighthouse built into a house. Like it's literally just the little turret on would top live of the there. house. Yeah. Would live there. Yeah. Would like to live there. It looked like a, a lighthouse. To the house. <laughs> yeah, that's it was really like it was. It was really bizarre to see. Um, yeah, but going back to the the energy and the feel of the island, I was really excited because I I have a big thing with water. I think water it holds, it amplifies. You know, it's a conductor, and it, I was re- I I have water around me always. It helps me sleep. Um, it just I feel charged. He's got a lot of fish tanks. Yeah. So <laughs> um, I, I'm like, this is great. We're going to be on an island surrounded by water. I wonder if it's going to amplify everything and actually. Just charge, and I I, maybe it's a thing with the islands you're talking about. It's a combination of feelings. I think that there is, as I mentioned before, that feeling of separateness and that like anything could happen. And so what we did uh, in, in anticipation of this podcast coming to Kelly's Island, I posed a question on a couple of forums on Facebook. One is our, our Kelly's Island Chamber of Commerce page, and the other was uh, this this page we call the Kelly's Island Yard Sale, which it originally started as a yard sale, but it's kind of like a catch-all for anything, really. Yeah. You can post if you need a cup of sugar or something on this page, <laughs> and people will answer. So I thought that I would, you know, if you guys don't mind, give a shout-out to a few islanders who bothered to, yeah, to sure. share stories. Yeah, because that thread blew up. Yeah, it yeah. did. <laughs> Before you get into that, Leslie, I'm just wondering, what what is your uh, opinion on all of this? Hearing all of, Because there's something to be said about the history of a place, and, and everyone likes to hear the history of the place, but do you feel that there is a living history, like an energy that that sticks with a place? Well, it's, it's an odd thing. It's like you want to believe in ghosts, and a lot of families have resident ghosts but yeah. it's not something people talked about a lot so yeah. even in my research like through 1900 i really only found two references one referred to a small child who turned out to have grown into actually an old man <laughs> <laughs> and the other one was um a, a memory that someone recounted now that one at the trishman house was one that kept reoccurring on the threads because we shared it over at the at the um, museum's Facebook page too. So you were get, you were drawing from all these different audiences. Oh wow! But cool. yeah, Jordan, Which read them. Some was, of them were yeah, so let's, good. Let's, yeah, let's, Which let's one was the Trishman House? Was that the Trishman House? Is the Island House restaurant? That's what I thought. It was okay. also the, yeah. Was that the Mosley's Ghost? Uh, Moisey. Moisey. Uh, I'm scrolling down mm-hmm. to find this. So that was actually probably the most popular mention. So this comes from Michael Beatty, this story. Um, he said, Moisey used to live in the island house. He was always pulling pranks on the employees and the people who live upstairs. And he said he ran into him 
a few times, saw his shadow come out of one of the bedrooms and enter the hallway, stare at me, and a few seconds later, he turned and went back into the room. And an- another time, he reports that um, a group of friends were playing euchre upstairs, and the lamp that they had for light turned off. Um, he found that the plug had been pulled out of the wall. He plugged it back in, and a few minutes later, they heard the twist and switch, uh, and the lamp clicked off, and they had to click it back on themselves. And the third time, he was downstairs in the bar area after the Island House restaurant was closed. Uh, the waitresses were cleaning up, and one of them was vacuuming in another room with the cord going through the bar area into the opposite room. The vacuum suddenly turned off, and he went to plug uh he went to plug it back in and said, which one of you did this? <laughs> and he went walking and the cord was plugged from the wall um, and pretty uh, intricately tied up around the legs of a chair. Whoa. So that was, uh, that was one of them. Um, wow. So people also reported um, like Abby Rosado, who um, her, her family runs the Kelly's Island wine company on Woodford road. She said that, um, uh, the new building, which is, I, th- I guess, where the restaurant is and everything, um, they they believe, this has not been proven, or uh, I, I don't think so, at least, that there was once um, an Indian burial ground, or there were graves of some kind. Um, there are some intact burial grounds down the street, I guess, on Woodford. That's what she says. Is that... I don't think they're intact, but there was a small mound. Um, it appeared to contain just household ancient household debris. I see. Hmm. And there have been multiple sightings of a woman with long, dark hair, usually on Sundays. And then another person added, Mary Spade, um, that there's a serious feeling of we should go now at about 10 p.m. on Sundays when you're Um, working at the winery. That's what people report. this is a winery we plan to visit, correct? Yeah. This is the restaurant um, on Woodford Road. The, the, The new building is probably, what, about... 10, 15 years old, I think. But yeah. next to it is a stone house that was built by an island stonemason. He also built the um, uh, the police station building, too, and uh, several other ones. But that one is very, very old. You're talking 1860s probably on that wow. one. Um, perhaps the most infamous haunted site would be South Haven oh. Winery. People oh. have seen uh, all kinds of stuff. Jason Smith uh, said that both the house and the winery at South Haven – entrance um uh, they've he's heard lots of voices and movement in the house um he even saw an apparition in the winery the only ghost he's ever seen his whole life it was about six four a skinny male figure and uh um he said he believes that a few other people have seen the t- a tall ghost like that over the years and and um and uh, Fern Gorchester, who uh, owns the property, confirms these. <laughs> she says there's all kinds of stuff, uh, temperature changes um, in the in the house, uh, and weird stuff. Definitely worth a visit. Um, so I think those are probably the most um, the most standout stories. But um, there's another great book. Um, Jesse Martin wrote about beginnings and tales of Lake Erie Islands, and and that also deal, details the the murder, uh, alleged murder of Elizabeth Self, which um, Leslie referred to earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's there's a lot there's a lot here um, on this thread, um, and finally, I guess the the Estes School is said to be a, a charged atmosphere that Mr. Estes was always uh, wanting his presence to be known that it was his school. Mm-hmm. Barb Schnick, Schnick, Schnicker mm-hmm. says the attic at the school. Uh, Mr. Estes always seemed to let me know that it was his school. So we are right now at the Kelly's Island School. Uh, this is where the Facebook thread, person on the Facebook thread, said that Mr. Estes would make sure that they knew that this was his school. Um, in the upper floors of the school, supposedly Mr. Estes would appear in some way or move things around or something i'm not exactly sure they were very vague about it but walking up to the front of the school here just up the sidewalk to the front of the school as soon as i as soon as i break the kind of the barrier of the school grounds it's on top of me i feel it all around me it's like at 100 percent um as i'm walking up to the front doors it's getting stronger and stronger goose pimples my eyes are starting to well up i'm getting short of breath and i'm walking up to the front doors and it's just like 
way heavy on top of me. So I think uh, Mr. Estes is in fact here. Um, I it I says Estes 1901 right on the flagstone. I was going to say, I'm, I'm actually feeling the <coughs> second floor. Well, if you look, that's, that window up on the third floor is open. Um, and that's, I think, where people said they were seeing him. Take a bunch of pictures of that window, see if maybe anything shows up in those windows. Um, I'm going to do a quick walk around the building. Joe's going to just take some photographs of the front of the building. Um, Joe's not feeling what I'm feeling here, but there is definitely some pretty strong energy here. So I am walking around the back of the school right now. It's not a very big school building. It's probably, I don't know, maybe it's like 80 feet by... 100 feet and uh, it's two stories high. Oh, there's a whole bunch of buildings in the back here too. So that was just the front of the building, which I'm guessing is the, okay. And then this is like got gymnasium and there's some other classrooms and stuff back here. So I can't walk all the way around the building. But the first part, the front part of the building before the additions were made on uh, is obviously the original school that was built in 1901. I have this really weird go, feeling right now. Go right, walk okay. behind, go walk, I'm feeling hold, it right Hold on, now. hold on. Go walk behind there, it's getting stronger I'm, and stronger. Okay, I'm getting a really weird feeling right now that I haven't gotten before, but it almost feels like, I'm feeling like this cold in my chest, like kind of like when you're clammy when you're sick. Like I have this kind of clammy body feeling right now. And it's really bizarre because I've never had that before. I just saw that. Whoa, thing. whoa, whoa. Dude. Okay. All the power just went out, that's crazy. Holy shit, that okay. So we we got onto the school grounds about seven or eight minutes ago. There was a there was a light on the light pole that was illuminating the whole building, just crazy style illuminating the building, and it just went off. And now it's pitch black out here. I was just feeling like lit up. Oh, like whoa! No, go holy over here. I'm shit, you, dude! I I'm I didn't even you. I didn't even move. It just came at me. Did you like? It literally just physically knocked me back. I am like literally like right now like just like awake. Okay, awake. I just Go got over here, dude. I'm, ho I'm not. You, hold on, there, hold dude. on. I know, but dude, if I, you think it's bad here, it go just over came here. at me. I just got hit with it like like a wave. Dude, My eyes so, are tearing up. It, it like so it strange. just Wait came. Go over there. I, I know. This is. I don't have to go over there because it just came to me. I know, but it, it just almost knocked me off my feet. I'm telling you. Holy shit. Dude. It came at me like, you know when in the Evil Dead when it's like coming, it's coming back in the now. Evil it's Dead when they showed back. like the camera of like the the the, 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 the 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 like demon coming at people like through the woods <laughs> and <laughs> leaves are blowing away. That just happened to me, man. Oh my god. That was crazy. Now it's following us. Yeah. Now it's I feel it on my back and it's following us back to the car. Who? I know it's Mr. Right. Estes, nice to meet you. Thank you for coming out to say hi. So I gotta get on Facebook and let that person know that, sure enough, uh, Mr. Estes is indeed here, uh, if that's who they think it is. Mr. Estes always seemed to let me know that it was his school. So those are, I think, my wow. favorite stories there, from the There trip. was somebody that said in a private home, too, that they saw a full apparition of a woman holding a child. Uh, and he was one of four witnesses. I actually contacted him on the thread and talked to him a little bit about it. Um, but he said it was like over 30 years ago, and the person who owns the house now is somebody else and doesn't know exactly. But I mean, a huge shout-out to the people who responded to that thread. Usually you don't get that sort of a response. Um, yeah, we and try to throw things out there quite often, and usually you just it's crickets, it's completely empty, or people jump on and... Say really, really horrible things to you. And one uh, of the, so that was really overwhelming, and thank you Oh, yeah, people, so much people are really down for that stuff here. Yeah. One of the interesting so things was... something about the island, I think. Right. Yeah, it just energy of this we're island. Special. <laughs> we're special. We're, we're special, right? People That's, are into it here. They, well, they we, get it. We were just trying to find stories on the island, and we weren't finding it. Like, there's no, like... You know, a lot of places you can be a haunted, Cleveland haunted, whatever, and things will show up, and you'll see a, a, like a list on some website or whatever. But for Kelly's Island, there really wasn't anything listed, which was compelling to me because uh, over at Puddin Bay, there's already a, 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 a book about the you know ghosts and haunted things over there. We just talked to the author yesterday, and um, 
the the fact of the matter is that I I find Kelly's Island so interesting because nobody's ever done any real research on the paranormal here, and I think that with with both of you involved and us involved, that we might be able to coax out some really interesting stories, and maybe somewhere along the line there could be a book about it, or Collab- at least a website or a catalog. Well, there was one story that turned up in one of those ghosts of the islands kind of things, and it had to do with quarry workers digging a tunnel, and the tunnel floods and kills everyone. And then he classified that as probably not true, because oh. it's probably not true. And there was n- there was no reason to... Go under. Build a there was no reason to build a tunnel because right. the quarry operations were always near water. They just punched through and went out on the water. But at the same time, you figure, you know, corporations nowadays don't give a crap about their workers. So you can only imagine, uh, you know, quarries, you know, 200 years ago, workers are out there. Somebody gets crushed in some machinery and they just kind of like throw some dirt on him and be like, uh, let's pretend that never happened. Joe didn't show up today. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, no. All those accidents turned up in the, in between the newspapers and, and the little local newspaper. But the reality is there was no reason to dig a tunnel anywhere. Right. Rock is rock, and you get to it from the surface, and you dig a big pit, and you keep going down until you don't want to go down anymore. Well, I imagine there had to be accidents and, and people Lots getting crushed accidents. to death and uh, all yeah, that kind blow, of stuff. Blown up with dynamite. The wow. funny story is... That uh, in 1854, they established the cemetery down on Division Street. The oldest part would be to the north or on the left side. And uh, the guy that the the trustees hired to clear the land for the cemetery did not do a good job. And they called him to task for it. And he said, what do I care? I'll never be buried there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was actually the first person buried in the cemetery. Oh, wow. He was blown up in a dynamite, ex- well, not dynamite, a black powder, a quarry explosion. The wow. second person followed a few months later, and he he was uh, crushed by a boat against a, a dock. Okay, we are now at the Kelly's Island Cemetery, um, and Jay is dropping us off on one end of it, and we're going to walk right through it. So I'm walking around the outside of the cemetery right now, it's still an active cemetery. Um, there are actually some um, lights and candles and things going in it right now. Memorials for people that were more recently buried here. Um, Jay just went and parked at the far end of the cemetery. We're just going to walk all the way through and see what we feel along the way. Um, so we're getting into the older part of the cemetery now. Um, I, I, I'm getting pulled toward the, the corner. Yeah. The back. Okay. Oh, did you just see that? What was that? Did you see it? I saw I saw, I I saw a blink of light. You. I saw a blink of light oh, out of the corner of my eye yes. up in the trees. What was it? I have no fucking clue, dude. That was so fast, was too. Was it in the tree I don't, or was it in no, the sky? No. Th- I, I, I don't know. I just saw the big flash light go. <sighs> okay. Holy shit. We both saw a flash of light in the trees, oh, right at the tree shit. line um, in the sky. Take a picture that way so we can... Um, show sure. well, right where we were feeling it. That's crazy. I'm yeah. lit up like a fucking Christmas tree right yeah. now too. Um, I'm not sure what it was. I can't say definitively it was something paranormal because I mean it could have been a uh, shooting star. I mean it, it could. I, 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 okay, I, so I, I, I thought what I saw was a white light with a red light tailing it. That's what, and I only saw it out of the peripheral vision for a second, uh, dude, but it looked like it was a, a white up light. Ball fly. It, it looked like a white light with a red light tailing it, so it could have been something like a plane or no, a, a hell helicopter. no, dude. Well, I mean, it's no not. Way. It's nowhere in the sky now, so I don't no know what way. the hell that was. He was actually the first person buried in the cemetery. So Anything any, ever happened at the stone crusher thing? Right. Like, it feels like anything called a stone crusher sounds like it would murder a bunch of people. Uh, it, uh-huh. it, you have to remember, up until about the 1890s, everything was done by hand. So drilling a hole so that you could fill it with black powder and break away stone, that was all done by hand. A guy with a long pike with a kind of drill bit on the end, three guys with sledgehammers, they would hit it, he would turn, hit it, turn, hit it, turn, and they would start all over again. In the 1890s, steam came to the island, and that allowed for steam drilling and and a bunch of other stuff, but everything was manual labor, 
everything. So loading stone into the carts um, and then, then transferring it to a train. The train would run it through a crusher again later on. And then from there it would go back out to the docks again, uh, f- fall into bins. And then there were chutes. The chutes would tumble the stone down onto a barge. At any given time, stone could get wedged. They would send a guy down there to loosen the stone, or if they couldn't do that, they would use um, black powder or dynamite to break it loose. Okay. But other than that, you know, a lot of accidents, a lot of fingers lost, a lot of eyes lost, a few terrible explosions. One guy, his head was blown to atoms. So, hey, I'm here at the old stone crusher on Kelly's Island, uh, right next to the glacial grooves, and I am here with, what is your name? Dave. I'm here with another Dave. I'm Dave as well. Okay. Um, uh, Dave has been a volunteer here for, what, 10 years, you said? Um, so what is the structure that we're standing in right now? I, it was called the Stone Crusher Building is what I know it as. And when was this built? Uh, I couldn't tell you, late 1800s. Okay. In the one book, the most ironic story that I ever heard, and this is a true story, is the, the graveyard down here. Yeah. Uh, the guy that, that cleared the whole site Oh yeah, to bury people in. Right. He said he would uh, never be buried there, and he wound up getting buried. He was, he was the first the person first buried. one. Got his head blown off in a dynamite accident yeah. in Corian, and he was the first one in the stone. You can still see it down there. If wow. You know where to look. But. Did you find them? All right, so this is the rest of our crew. Guys, this is Dave. He's, uh, he's, he's the guy that's been uh, messing with all those kids. With the, with the phantom that's supposed to be around here, and then they pull off the mask, and it's him. <laughs> and on that note, Leslie uh, has to go check the front of the museum. This is... Uh, yeah, this is normal operating hours for the museum. So, um, any, uh, have you heard of any stories particularly from Quarry area uh, on the island? No, just really about like families of quarry men. We have a little bit of background noise, but the selfs, for example, as we discussed a couple of times, they were there. The father came over from Pe- they came over from Peely Island um, because there wasn't enough work, so they came over to be uh, part of that quarry well, money was, opportunity. Was there any specific? type of immigrant that founded the island? Was it like German or Bavarian or like, was there any like one Leslie specific? Leslie would know. I think Leslie would know that. Yeah. Um, but um, that's okay. any, anything as far as like shipwrecks or like oh, you, tons stories of, of ghost shipwrecks lives or UFOs or ghost ship like stories? <laughs> yeah. And we're having a hard time scrounging some up for, you know, uh, from locals. Um, there are, if you just give me a second, sure. I'm going to look it up on my phone. Now, in the Dave, yes, um, the quarry area on the island is that where the campground is located as well? You said it was around the quarry. Am I thinking of the right island? No, there's uh, there is a state park near the quarry on the north end of the island that does have campgrounds. Then there's another campground on the east side of the island, like a oh, private sh- campground. But when I was talking, like when we were trying to find a place to stay here, like these islands get booked up like way, way, way in, in the beginning of the year. People are calling. And the inn just happened to have a cancellation. Yeah, <laughs> and thank you to you, we have a place to stay. Oh, but we were thank you. We were considering just like just marching into the quarry and just guerrilla style camping right in the middle of, the, of, of a field. Somewhere. Thought, the manager of the chamber, I cannot condone that. <laughs> <laughs> that good. Just like yeah, yesterday. You have to. <laughs> Just like yesterday in front of a, the, the National Park guy, our, our author contact, uh, picks up an endangered snake. And the guy's like, uh, you, cannot, you cannot do this. You cannot do this. Well, the, the snakes, um, they're, they're, I don't think they're endangered anymore. Correct. They had just come off the endangered snake. And species. they've... List. You know, they've adapted to that. Like, the snakes used to be afraid. If you encounter one in the water, you sort of swish your hand about and it would swim away. Now... They're very bold, and they just keep swimming, and you have to get out of their way. Yeah. It, but they won't bite you. But if you oh, that one bit me. But I mean, if you water snakes are are very grumpy snakes, they, they do are. not like being handled. They do not like being confronted, and they will put up a pretty impressive display of 
aggressive. Like people say they're aggressive, but they're really defensive. My my favorite story is we were down at the beach at the state park on the north side, and there was a small boy mm-hmm. chasing a snake through the water, almost catching him, almost catching him, mm-hmm. almost catching him. Finally, grabbed the tail. Of course, the snake turned around and bit him, and he started screaming, Why did the snake bite me? Why did he bite me? I was just being friendly. <laughs> I've never heard anyone get bit, but, you know, if you mess yeah, if you, with if you, if you If you grab them, they will bite. And they, they, they don't, it doesn't do any damage. They, it's like a cat scratching you. You'll get a little blood, but it's not going to be, like, life-threatening or anything. There probably isn't a dog on the island without a snake scar on his nose. Yeah. Really? <laughs> I get, you're right. That's getting, true. Getting back to the, the drilling and um, the rocks, um, it, is there any minerals or crystals that they discovered on this island? Well, yeah, it used to be sea bottom. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in fact, uh, back depending on what layer they were in in the quarry, you could go down there and there would be like small geodes and and fossils or fossils everywhere. You go down to the beach, sit down on the stones, and look around, and within five feet, you'll pick up a dozen small fossils. I'm, I'm assuming they're mostly like sea fossils, mollusks, and shells and yeah, things Actually, like for that. the most part, they're shells and um, corals. Okay, cool. So no, like, dinosaurs. Nothing, nothing that crazy. No dinosaurs uh-huh. on the island. Now, uh, we just asked Jordan about this, but um, any stories about like shipwrecks or anything like that near the, the island here? Ghost ships. And there things. are so many Love shipwrecks those. in Lake Erie, and not all of them have been found. Only a few hundred have been found. Right. Uh, there is a group called MAST, M-A-S-T, and they locate and do side scans, right, uh, the side scan to determine locations and boats and and what they belong to. We have one on the north side called the Adventure that is in very shallow water. In fact, when the lake goes down, particularly in the wintertime, if it goes way down, you can actually see parts of it. It is a dive site. We have a couple of the dive charts over here. On the east side is the uh, Exchange, I think. Um, We actually have four dive charts for four of the wrecks that people like to dive around the island. Do any of these wrecks tend to come back? Come back as in Spectrum. ghostly. <laughs> no, uh, for the most part, they were wrecked during storms. Um, but around here, it's very easy to get to the shore. Um, the adventure on the north side, uh, they were loading quick lime and it caught fire. So they towed it to the north side, which is where the wreck actually ended up laying. Most of the fatalities occurred in deeper water. Um the Clemens brothers over in Marblehead, they were responsible for the establishment of the, of the Marblehead Life Saving Station out there. And they were active rescuers. Um, they had a lot of equipment. They went out there when no one else would. A lot of harrowing stories about rescues there. Some involved deaths. Um, but up here, not so much because, uh, if, if, if the wreck was anywhere near the islands, they could generally get to shore pretty easy. Got it. Yes, something I um I was actually reading was it's a kind of controversial, but the buried treasure on the shore of a, um of Lake Erie. I don't know if you heard anything about that or well, there is a persistent rumor, and in the 1930s there was a, a again a small newspaper printed just for a summer or two, and um the the editor said that someone had contacted them about the buried treasure on Long Point. And supposedly it was put there during the War of 1812 and contained the wages, so many thousands of dollars in wages for the people who, for the, uh, uh, the English that were on the ships. Um, it appears they didn't find it. Most of Long Point has worn away. In today's money, that was probably something like eight or nine million dollars, which is like a little high for wages for, you know, English sailors. So I, a lot of these things persist, but there's Really, no evidence that that actually happened. Yeah, I forgot what happened, but they had to bury it, and they're like, "Okay, we're, we're going to come back for this." But then when they came back, it was the winter, and then they couldn't find it, and they just left it. But it's kind of like, why would you just leave that? So it has to, you know. When you dig back, a lot of times you wonder why would they even do that, and right. that's usually your key that they probably yeah. didn't. But the rumors persist. Yeah. Is it kind of like st- you know stuff in your your money under the mattress? During the Depression, I don't know, it's safer, buried somewhere, 
Uh, I think it was just a good tale. That's all. I honestly, it's fun, it's I fun to think about. I sell gold and silver as one of my side hobby slash businesses, and I know a lot of people that have gold and silver, and they they'll put it in PVC tubes and bury it in their yard. Yeah. Like there's legit. I mean, most of them Where? are crazy. <laughs> yeah, the most of them Where are can we GPS coordinates, them? please. Most of them are crazy prepper types, but that's a lot of them do that. A lot of them do actually. You know, it's still to this day people are burying their money. In a coffee can in the backyard. All right, I want to dig up my backyard now. I, I could tell Let's you, uh, on the north side of Chicago, I was digging a pond uh, in my backyard for my mother. Got about four feet down, and it was a, a nineteen early nineteen hundreds home. I remember this. Do you remember this? Yes. Dug the hole. I was digging, you know, just excess dirt out of the hole, making the the deep part for my pond. And I saw an old coffee can in this hole. So. And it, the bottom was kind of rusty. You could tell, and there was something in it. There was a large amount of something. And I went to lift out the can. Bottom dropped out. Contents went down a, a just a super deep hole, never to be found. Don't know what was in that can. There's anyway, a I digress. It, in, but that reminded me. In recent coin lore, there's uh, something called the Saddle Ridge Horde. Um, this is in California. This couple was out on their land one day with their dog. And uh, their dog was sniffing at something in the ground, and they looked over at it, and it was a little, looked like a little lid to a can, like a little round, about the size of a, you know, a saucer or like a soda can. And they kicked the top off of it, and it was a can filled with gold coins. They wound up finding seven more. The gold coins' face value was thirty-seven thousand dollars in gold coins. Wow! It was they were worth like some, I think. I saw one at a coin show, and it was like selling for fifteen thousand dollars. And the coin itself, like, was worth maybe twenty five hundred, but because it was from this like famous like treasure trove, recent stash, like people were inflating the price on it. But I think all in all, they wound up keeping a bunch of it, but they they sold I think nine million dollars worth, something like that. Yeah. It was pretty crazy. Um, so that those things do happen, and uh, there was even rumor that whoever buried them there stole them from the mint. That they worked at the mint and they were stealing mm-hmm. coins over the years. Because well, all we, these we coins were they focus this trip? Yeah, uh, but, away from the paranormal <laughs> onto treasure hunting. Yes, yeah. Yeah. but treasure hunting and the paranormal <laughs> go hand in hand. I mean, Tom absolutely. And gold. That's how you should make your money. Anything about sea serpents or aliens? You read my mind. Yeah. Oh, God. You read my mind. I mean, we we you covered, take this one. We covered. Ghosts. I don't want this one. <laughs> we covered petroglyphs. We covered Native Americans. We covered uh, the energy. Yeah, like ghost we lights out well on the lake. Anything, go all the way. Any stories like that? Okay. Um. There. There. In delving in the past, there have been reports of a long snake-like Ooh. sea serpent. Yes. But at the time, remember, we also had um, muskellunge. We had some very large fish in the lake. No one has ever caught it. Hasn't been sighted much at all. It's and probably if, sturgeon too, right? Yep, yep, sturgeon yep. Sturgeons, yeah, sturgeons, yes, very, yes, crazy very big fish. bumps yeah, on the back, fine. the whole shebang. So um, that has not surfaced in a really long time. Um, they were calling it, I think, Lake Erie Nelly, I think. Oh wow! Yeah. And um, uh, let's see, ghost ships. No, but you know, sometimes at night, if you're standing out there, you will see a dark figure moving across the lake at high speeds with no lights on. We think probably they're contraband boats. <laughs> oh yeah, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, they no move. Way. They move pretty quiet, and and they move really, really fast. So you know, by the time you even want to try to get a camera out, they're, and they're painted black, so you kind they're of probably just shadows. Sm- they're probably smuggling prescription medications over from Canada. from Canada. That's that people probably, can afford. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, during the prohibition, weren't some of these islands uh-huh. used as ports? Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, not so much ports because. Um, where did it come from and why didn't they just take it to their final destination? Yeah. Same thing with slavery. You know, why would they bother bringing slaves to the island where they can just, you know, hop them on a train and take them to Toledo or Detroit and, you know, get them right into Canada? They would have stood out like, like oh, anything up here. Point. But, um, yeah, they said after like a big storm or if there was something going on, moon- moonless nights. Maybe even distraction mm-hmm. where it makes it seem like going back and forth. They would go, island, really. they would go down to the beaches and check for packages that might have been thrown over. And so, yeah. Oh, wow. There was um wow. we heard rumor on the other island that that there was uh, some underground railroad activity on these islands. No, that was the whole slavery thing. Um uh 
I can't imagine because we had mostly steamboats that were um, uh, excursionists. And they didn't go anywhere except to the islands. And then a lot of times they, a lot of times they would go to Detroit or Toledo or back the other way to Cleveland. But again, it would have been very difficult to hide someone. And the trip would have been much longer than if they'd have gone a safer route. Right. Um, back in the 1850s, um, one of the Kelly, uh, descendants had written that he saw his first Negro. He was working, uh, stoking the furnaces on one of the steamboats. It was the first one he had ever seen. So at that point, the Underground Railroad was, was already in, you know, right, in right. the works. So yeah, pretty much not so much here. But Sandusky has a lot of Underground Railroad activity. The, um, Erie County Historical Society has a walking tour of places where they housed them and the historical markers and everything because that was a railroad hub. Uh, again, Great Black Swamp off to the west. Um, that was where everything stopped, the steamboats. Very few steamboats went over to Canada, which is where they wanted to go. Wow. And any lights in the sky? Or <laughs> <laughs> uh we do get occasional norm, uh, um, northern lights. The Persaids lights. were here last weekend. Yeah, the meteor shower. The meteor yeah, shower. we could see that. that. Was beautiful. And, and this is kind of a nice yeah. place to view a lot of that because there's no, not a lot of conflicting lights. Um, we have, um, the northern lights? It's yeah, very cool. occasionally the northern lights. I would love to see uh, Of course, them. out north. And they were just, they just said, uh, one of those, you know, 25 years, 100 years ago today kind of things, that, um, there was a mirage of the mainland Canada that could be seen from the islands. Uh, to people walking around and everything, it was just one of those environmental things that just, yeah. That had to be just mind That would have been very You know cool. what is so bizarre? This is off topic, but in my place in the north, even on, okay, so I can see from, from my house, I can see Hen Island, which is Canada. I can see Middle Island in the foreground and then behind it, Pelee. And then, of course, I can see Middle Bass. But sometimes I can see East Sister Island. And it doesn't have to be an exceptionally clear day. It's so weird. I don't know why only sometimes I can see East Sister Island, which is like way northeast. Maybe the condensation of the moisture, I don't know. maybe it's almost like a magnifying glass. I, have, I don't know. It, it could be. It, it could be. It's like sometimes, sometimes it's, it's, a mirage. it's <laughs> so clear that on the mainland or over at the Bass Islands, you can make out individual houses. I mean, perfectly clear. You can mm-hmm. see the lights of cars driving along the yeah. shoreline and make out individual trees. And then, you know, the next day it's back to just. You know, something in the distance. Amorphous blob. Yep. In the, on sure. The horizon. Sears Tower, sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, we're sitting here at the museum, Kelly's Island History Museum, surrounded by all sorts of great uh, artifacts. Could you tell us a little bit about this museum? Uh, Dave and Joe both kind of felt a little ping of energy here. Could you tell us a little bit about your museum? Okay. Um The association was formed 38 years ago, and for the most part, they had a small museum over in the church next door, which is a stone-built German Reformed church. It was built in 1866, I think, and um, six years ago, we moved into this new building. We were able to bring out a lot of artifacts that were in storage. Uh, We redid the whole inside of the museum three years ago to give a more, a, a better experience for people who are visiting. So now we have hundreds of pictures, lots of stories posted. We took our experience of people asking, what about this, what about that? And we answered those questions right up front on all the posters. We have some very old and some very interesting things, including some prehistoric stuff. We have a piece of petrified wood and a whole bunch of Indian artifacts. And um, when you walk through... I can't imagine you wouldn't feel something because almost all of these were part of a family. They were well kept and preserved. They were well loved. And we display them to the best of our ability and, and 
it's just it is so cool walking through because you know when you first came in and you were wanting to set up and you're going oh look at this oh look at that I'm thinking right, like, I can't get sidetracked I gotta we gotta that's the best compliment we could possibly have you're on a mission and we yeah. distracted you with something you did, cool well, in the museum we did what uh, what artifact in the museum really blows your mind what 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 made you say wow this is this is really cool. I really hate when people ask me that because for, uh, 40 minutes later, <laughs> right. no, after I have bounced to three okay. dozen things. It, trust us, it's okay. We were very fortunate to have a lot, of, um, a lot of stories from the Islander, the local Little Islander newspaper. Um, we had some very avant-garde uh, photographers. We ended up with a lot of pictures of things that you wouldn't normally see. Like one cool one actually shows the poof from an explosion in the quarry wow. where they blasted. Uh, another one shows the ironclad mail boat that they used to take mail back and forth to Sandusky. Um, we have a, a, a magnificent silk wedding dress from the 1830s that had so been bad. lovingly preserved. Um, it's just... Oh, yeah. I can, like, talk for an hour. <laughs> okay, so could you talk about that creepy doll? <laughs> that's sitting on the rocking chair. That that stopped me in my tracks. I'm like, well, didn't expect that. It's funny. Some people are really freaked out by the doll. It's a very pretty doll. It has little lace-up black and white um, shoes that you probably would have had to use a button hook on. It has eyes that open and close. Yeah. The hair's kind of a little scraggly at this point. It's got a little pearl necklace on, yes. and it sits there. And some people are just, just they. I mean, they will walk five feet away from it and not even want to look at it. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think it's kind of cool. And one little girl came in, spotted it, and dragged it along behind her for a while oh. before we managed to get it out of her fist. So it doesn't affect everyone the same way. What, when was it... Um you know, of course, now that little girl's possessed by demons. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, probably. Do you know the history of the doll itself? The black licorice. <laughs> yeah, black licorice. Oh, long story. We'll tell you the story of the black with licorice. Um, uh -huh. I do. I I don't know it offhand. Um, the the little it, card disappeared a long time ago, and we haven't replaced it yet. Got but it. it does date back to I want to say probably the early 1900s. Okay. Uh, one question I wanted to ask when you ran out of the room before to go talk to somebody um, was: it, Was there any one particular type of settler that came here? Like, were they from one specific country, or was there one specific influence? Or well, that's a really good question. Yeah. The first settlers, the first wave of immigrants to come to the island were the Germans. They were attracted okay. to the, so the, the winery kind of industry. Of yeah, um, uh, and and of course, we were one of the first islands to actually embrace. Wineries and vineyards. Um, there, we had uh, we had an Irish settlement out on Huntington Lane. There's a whole series of Irish house uh, Irish families built there. Uh, we had uh, you'd see things in the paper about the uh, Slovaks that recently arrived on the island, or the Italian group that just left. Um, they didn't really talk about them all that much. Most of them were quarry workers. A lot of them were seasonal because it was, uh, you know, like eight or nine months out of the year and then winter set in. Although they did do some quarrying over the winter. Are there different architectural influences from those groups that came here? Like you said, the houses the Irish people built, were they Irish-style houses? No, they were standard uh, frame houses. The Germans tended to build stone houses or, or a small wood frame house and then build a stone house as they got more prosperous. We have probably a little bit of everything on the island. You would think on this island that it would be really easy to build a stone house with all the stones around. <laughs> stone? You needed a, a skilled stonemason, and it was very expensive. Um, we do have quite a few stone houses and buildings on the island, but again, uh, the the labor intensiveness kind of tamps that down a little bit. Most people wanted a house; they built a house. Yeah, um, I have I own some property in Iroquois County, Illinois, and a gentleman who's owned some lots just across from mine, he spent almost fifteen years building a house out of stone. By hand, all himself. Well, this is really incredible. If you walk up to any of the stone buildings, walk up to a corner, a lot of times you can see the tool marks, uh, especially like on the church next door. Take a line sight down the side. Those walls are perfect. They are straight. They are just, just incredible. Like the pyramids. Like the pyramids. <laughs> Oscar isn't mic'd up today. Um, He's doing his editing thing, but do you have any questions for either Leslie or Yes, can you guys help me in asking a question? 
Sure. I'm awful at this. The closest I got to anything island fair is uh, reading um, a Sarah Vowell book about shipwrecks and stuff, but that's yeah. as close as I can get. So I know nothing. But because uh, every question I can think of, you guys have asked already. <laughs> so um, just want to give you your spot. Yeah, I know. Um, also, asking a story about ghost stuff usually it doesn't turn out that great, but you guys are the best at it. So oh, thank thanks. you. Thanks. There you go. <laughs> Any anything else you guys want to add at all? No, we're just really glad you came. This yeah. is kind of exciting yeah. and a little Wonderful different for us. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever had any other paranormal investigators on the island that you know of asking questions like this? I'm sure like there this? have been, but I don't think that they bothered to call me or call the History Museum. No. You would think that, that would be the first thing museum. they would do. Uh, well, yeah, you'd think. Away our secrets. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. So we I want to encourage other people to do this all over the country. Like if you're, if you're out, you know, if you're listening to this and you're a paranormal researcher, even if you're just starting, you know, amateur, like, you know, go out there and talk, find the historians yeah. and ask the talk. questions mm-hmm. and like that. Because yeah. One of the main reasons that people are so interested in ghost stories is because it's literally like a living history. We're seeing, you know, we're seeing the the paranormal is history. That's what it is, and and uh, you know, it it goes hand in hand. You can't investigate the paranormal without investigating the history. You can't be like, oh, well, there's a ghost of a guy that walks around without a head, and everyone's like, well, why is that? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Just is. <laughs> I don't know, just some guy, whatever. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Well, we really, <laughs> we really love that when people embrace the paranormal, they they do it wholeheartedly. Right. And it's a shame that like new people buying houses, not interested in the history, not interested in you know the lore, you know they're just buying a house on the island, and and you know it's kind of a shame because right. the, the history is so rich up here. I mean, yeah. you can't turn a corner without bumping into something mm-hmm. historic. <laughs> Today's episode of the Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast is brought to you by LootCrate.com. LootCrate, totally rat swag from your favorite movie, television, and video game franchises, delivered conveniently to your front door. That's Marvel, Far Cry, Rick and Morty, Batman, WWE, Harry Potter, anime, Minecraft, Stranger Things, and a whole lot more, guys. Visit TryLootCrate.com forward slash SOS dash radio and enter promo code BRIDGE10 to receive 10% off any new subscription. That's trylucrate.com forward slash SOS dash radio and enter promo code BRIDGE10 for 10% off any new subscription to Lucrate. Your order must be placed, however, before 9 p.m. Pacific time on or before the 19th of the month to secure your special listener offer. That's trylucrate.com forward slash SOS dash radio and enter promo code, what's that, guys? BRIDGE10. And and the thing is, like, even even if people don't don't even like, everyone loves a ghost story. And even if they don't believe it, even if they think it's complete bullcrap, like, there's like everyone wants to hear a ghost story. Like, there's nobody that's gonna be like, ah, I don't like listen to that stuff, whatever. Like, and islands like this, they make the imagination run wild. Yeah. So, Jordan, I'm gonna ask you, like, what? So right now, we have the rest of today to go out and investigate anything. What would you recommend that we go... Who should we go talk to right now when we're done with you guys? Uh, definitely Fern Gorchester at South Haven, but I should probably call her before okay. that <laughs> happens. Um, she Because I ran into her in the cafe yesterday, okay. and um, that's where I run into most people who have been around a while <laughs> here because it's connected to my office. And uh, so I should ask her. I would say South Haven for sure. Um, where, where would you say, Leslie? <laughs> Boy, that's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. I um, think you guys just really like wine 
And you're just going to tell us, like, go to this winery and then that winery. Well, you can, you can pretty much, uh, I would definitely go into, I think now it's a, a Mexican restaurant down by the wine company. That is the Stonehouse. There you oh, go. the KI Cantina. We can eat yeah, there. the Cantina. We need you, to eat food. You can too. eat there. That's one of the very, very old stone houses by that stone builder. And um, I would definitely, uh, another food place to stop at the Island House. Yes. They might be able to walk you through. That's where the, the Moisey ghost was seen quite a bit. And because it's a restaurant, it's public. You won't be bothering anyone. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think. I think I think wine. I think we're really just, you know, the spirits yeah. are, yeah, attracted. So the Island House is a, <laughs> is a, a working restaurant, it's right? It's a restaurant, it right. Okay. I think we should go eat there for lunch. Talk to them and then go over to the winery. Also, is there anywhere we shouldn't go? <laughs> where we're yeah, is there anywhere that's off limits I, that we're going to get like a shotgun or, blast I to mean, the back? Get, get, get hurt. I already found out earlier today by our hotel we're staying at the inn on Kelly's Island. I found out there is such a thing as a motion sensor sprinkler that wants to keep you off of its goddamn dock. <laughs> Do- doesn't surprise me. Um, the... The original Kelly Island Wine Company, which you probably saw pictures of at the other end of the museum, that would be like a super place to visit, but it is on private property, and people are getting really tetchy about trespassing. Got it. And um, Who owns it? Uh, Who would we it's, talk it's to? Several, several the McCafferty's? Do they own it? Uh, I'm company? not real sure. Some guy in Hawaii owns part of it. Oh. Um, but you can. There is another... Old winery ruins across from the cemetery. Oh, yeah, go to the cemetery. Yeah, for sure. Uh, very cool down there. Mm. Um, but across from the cemetery is another the ruins Monarch of a winery. That winery. was the Monarch yeah. Sweet Valley, the original Rush winery. Yeah. And um, uh, because it's for sale, you probably can assume a certain amount of leeway in yeah. visiting it. But, but We're on interested any- in this property. We're mm-hmm. interested in purchasing this property. Yeah, we're just there checking you go. it out. On any of the properties, you really need to be careful if there are paths stay to them, because especially in the old wineries, there are holes and dips and not to mention poison ivy, and which is an abundant And you come pearl. out with burrs all over your I am your actually uh, just not warning. allergic to poison ivy. I could roll right. around in it all day. I'll be fine. Oh, well, they're like needles. They stick into your clothes. Oh, yeah. Those, oh, those I know burrs. Yeah. Yeah. I know burrs. But the poison ivy, I think someone once said we have five kinds up here. They'll twine around a tree. The tree will die. The poison ivy will just keep on That's going. That's what the <laughs> innkeeper was saying. Oh, yeah. Too, yeah. Too Pat and Lori, out. they're just great. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, Pat and Lori. Yeah. I'm actually, uh, my, 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 my real job, I'm a professional forager. So I, I forage for restaurants oh, okay. in Chicago, and I go out and I collect wild foods and stuff. So I know all about the plants and everything. Thing too, so I, you know, I know my way around poison ivy and all that kind of stuff. Um, also, you might want to talk to uh, go down to the state park. The park ranger might walk you through some of the old, the crusher buildings. You go all the way down to the end, and you walk in on a path, and and I can show you pictures. There's a massive stone structure that was part of the quarry operation, the North Bay Loop Trail. Uh, that sounds yeah. super cool. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, would you be should take the North Bay Loop Trail too. for sure. That'd be a really yeah, easy and walk one to out do. onto the. The Alvars that jut out over the the lake yeah, too. We're really cool. need to write very some of this cool. stuff down. Yeah. I will mark uh-huh. everything on a yeah. map. <laughs> yeah, we have maps. We have maps. The Chamber <laughs> of Commerce <laughs> designs these wonderful maps. Yeah. And for listeners out there, you know, just play it back if you're planning on visiting. That's the directions. That road, that valley. You know, go there. <laughs> Are we good? Excellent. Yeah, yeah I think that's cool. it. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Um, I would like to know, just before we sign off, if you could tell us a little bit about your books that you've written. Yeah, there you were have six. six books, correct? I would like to put the links to purchase those books in our show notes and on our website and social media. Um, well, so. thank you. Well, um, I retired, got really bored, and I started researching the island's history. And five years later, I realized I had like a 3,000-page book. So I started breaking it up by years. So the books run in chronological order, and they're all firsthand accounts in the islanders' own words. I don't change anything. They were a hoot. They were <laughs> literate and funny and observant. And uh, so it's kind of nice because you can grow right along with the island. The sad part is you get invested in these people, and then they die. Yeah. <laughs> but, but then you get to know their children. <laughs> And, and it is wow. kind of fun uh, to, to just read all this. Everything came in the form of the 17 years that they wrote the newspaper. 
Um, all the news went to the Sandusky papers by letters written by islanders. And I did court cases and marriages and divorces. And, and so many books are not now available online. And, and it just all the little details. It's just, it's just a really rich, funny history. And, and they believed in preserving their history and they did a darn fine job of it. That sounds amazing. Yeah. 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 And they're all called Kelly's Island. And then there's a series of years. And um, six books. Fantastic. It goes all the way through 1893. Yeah. I have one, one more Listeners question. Listeners, watch for links to uh, purchase those books well, I have uh, one, in the show notes of this episode. One more question, but I, I, um, I'm sure I could ask anyone else on the island this later on. But what, how do you guys get supplies on the island? Is, are there barges that come in and like everyone just runs and grabs the supplies and runs off? Like, no, Do they dra- have, drop it in on parachutes? We have, <laughs> we have actually in the summertime during the week, you'll see big trucks come over you know, to supply the restaurants and the grocery store and the taverns. Okay. And um, we, have, we have the Island Market downtown, which is open long hours during the summer. In the wintertime, it's only open like five hours a day. But if you call Kim, she'll come down and open up for you. <laughs> and you can order anything through, through, you know, through them. They go over and pick stuff up. They have an airboat or they fly it over on the plane if the ferry's not running. Of course, you pay freight on everything, but you know, that's one of the beauties of island living. Yeah. Well, also, uh, what about like the post office? Amazon also, Amazon mm-hmm. Prime. Mm-hmm. Everyone's on Amazon. Has Friday. become our Walmart, you know. <laughs> yeah. But do, do they just come uh, once a day, the same, like just uh, one time over? No, no. Okay. They just we're on delivery routes for a lot of things. Uh, the post office is open from eight to three. We have, of course, one mail delivery a day. We have post office boxes because with almost nine hundred houses on the island, eighty-five uh, percent of which are not year-round, you know, occupied, because um, we have post office boxes. The other question so I have is, do the trucks come over on the regular passenger ferry? Or sure, do they yeah. have You can bring a yeah. semi-truck, cement truck over they on those. Brought yeah. They brought houses over on. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Flat so, there, but, so, so there's no like special boat just for bringing nope, over no. supplies? The large, uh, the, the uh, Kelly Island Ferry Boat Company has, I think, five, four boats. Four boats. Yep, four. The biggest one will hold 65 cars, a couple semis, dump trucks. Doesn't wow. matter. Also, um, the other question is: Do the the residents of Kelly's Island have to pay full price on those ferries every time they go back and forth? Yes, we do. Oh, that mm. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. It is not I cheap. can't possibly imagine. It was what a hundred and twenty dollars to come out here. One hundred and thirty. One hundred and thirty dollars uh, for for five vehicle, of us yeah. in a car to come out here. That's yeah. crazy. What happens if you're broke? What if you're like between like paychecks? Like you, you, you just not you can't live here if you don't have money, I guess. Okay, for the most part, you have to remember there are people that only go off island, say once a month to grocery shop. Yeah, uh, you know it's not uh-huh. it's, it's not like yeah it's not like you go over every day. I mean, you know, you schedule groceries and doctors and dentists and you do you know, it everything all, all at one, one time. Else. It's a long any, day, but you get it all done. Is there any agriculture on the island at all? Is there anyone growing food? At all? It's we, there's a, the, 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 I was <laughs> to say the Kelly Island Wine Company, the winery down there has yeah. a small vineyard, but mostly they just feed the deer, mm-hmm. um, because you need a 20 foot high electrified fence to keep them out. Right. Oh, it's really. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. but other than that, um, we have a, uh, one of the guys has, um, cattle, uh, horses, and he mows his field for hay. I don't think much else, though, because this is, I mean, you have to remember, there's not much soil on top of the limestone. Yeah. So it's like, I don't think it's very conducive to growing, you know, corn, soybeans, that kind of stuff. I was just wondering, no market like, for it I was just wondering if there's like yeah. a community garden, like tomatoes and cucumbers. Well, there is. There's a like small that. garden um, at the school, behind the school. You just sign up for a plot, and it looks like it's doing really well. A lot of people also, have small any gardens. Meeting you show up to, people bring their produce. Oh, yeah. You know, like Audubon Club, people just brought. Like, Mom said that someone just brought a bunch of tomatoes. That was us. <laughs> that was you. <laughs> we were so excited was, to have two tomatoes, and then we had four, and then we had twenty six, and then we had forty two. So we just started giving yeah. them away. I'm just gonna throw out a single word and see what you have to say about it. Skunks. No skunks. There, there are, are no skunks. skunks. There are totally skunks. There's no skunks on the island. What this did is, I smell the is, other night? <laughs> what you probably, is, that was okay. a tourist. This what is you one of the things I heard. Much fun. What you probably smelled was um, foxes. Foxes 
when they spray, it smells like skunk, but it's only real strong in a very, very small area. Skunks will fill up a block full of stink, and there's but a, the foxes there's, don't. There's actually a snake called a fox snake because when it musks, it smells just like a, uh, like a fox, and there's fox snakes on this island. Yes, there are. We have, uh, for, for wildlife, we have deer, squirrels, rabbits. Coyote. Coyotes. Did they take a barge over here? How did all those guys get here? They came on the ice. On the ice, yeah. Yeah. Uh And the deer, the deer, um, uh, ate. The deer were brought here. The deer were brought here. They have multiplied and, (laughs) and they love it here and they had shoots and everything and it just kind of didn't didn't do it. Yeah, we had a lot of mice and rats too, yeah. Mice, a lot of mice. Bald eagles now. A lot of birds. Well, we're migratory, so we see a lot of birds. The bird counts in the wintertime, sometimes they'll see 20, 30 eagles in groups of two or three. Wow. Yeah, what it's is, just what incredible. We have a couple nests on the island. I actually, I, like I think that. one of the first times I ever saw like an eagle up close was here on Kelly's Island. Yeah. Flew yeah. right over me when I first visited. Yeah, sometimes they'll be on the trees right over the roads, and you don't go to the post office, you come back, it'll mm-hmm. still be there. <laughs> cool. Well, um, I can't think of a better way to kick off the Kelly's Island portion yeah. of this podcast This is going to be... I told you guys. Sat down with you guys. Uh, I think this gave our listeners a really great, deep introduction to where we are. Uh, they can't see it, so let's tell them everything there is about it. And now we're going to go out and try to. Now you get to explore. Hunt I, and I explore. honestly think, exactly. guys. I so honestly think this you. is going to be an awesome adventure for us. I like, hope so. Yeah. Hey, well, of yeah. course, you're on Kelly's Island. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for having us. Really? Thank you very much great. for thank coming. And, and Jordan, I cannot thank you enough. You like this whole entire adventure that we're going to have today is because of you. Oh, well, you were so helpful. I just called just the Chamber nice of review. Commerce just <laughs> out of the blue, and I just called you. You know, talked to you, and you were like, you as soon as you heard what we were doing, you were right on board with this, and I really appreciate your help. Of course, thank you. <laughs> thank you're you. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, oh, and that's what I we just, mentioned. A lot of times, people aren't very receptive. So, thank yeah, again, thank you, listeners. Um, uh, watch for the Kelly's Island episodes uh, within the next two to four weeks. Oscar, take us home. Two to four weeks. Oscar, take us home.